this content is for kids. It's not uh, for kids. No, uh, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait no a one. second. Oh, no, 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 no. If we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sen vs. the World. I'm Septum Sen. This is Kotobuki Jake. We're hey. here to show you what we got. <laughs> yeah. Show me what you got. I want to see what you got. Oh boy. All right. Well, I guess I will li leave the floor to you to start us out. Um, but before I do, right. I am showing off one Christmas gift, the last of the shirt Christmas gifts, and your Rudolph hmm. shirt. <laughs> so it kind of matches. Not a Christmas right? gift, but that was an interesting accident. But anyway, well, actually, Naruto does have that. Uh, he is really good at making the shadow clones. You know, That's, there you go, <laughs> shadow shirts. There you go. Yeah. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. But anyway, um, we're going to start off with actually with something big. Um, those of you who are uh, following on this channel or Movies Galore, Delusions of Grandeur, or on the Animazing page, you probably know that uh, I have been a little frustrated at the speed of, uh, or lack thereof, of um, shipping and processing even for the uh, right stuff as of late. You know what really grinds my gears? Uh, but most of my orders finally arrived last week. I actually had an order, I think, on Monday and two on Wednesday or something along those lines. Still have an order from a while back that hasn't processed yet, that they claim one or more of the items are simply not there, they're on back order. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. But I went ahead and decided for this week, I actually have a, uh, a pretty solid theme for this week that does not involve right stuff. But I wanted to tack on the one that's the odd one out. It's a very rare pre-order that I placed. I don't do many. And of course, because of the delay in shipping, it did not arrive when it was normally we're used to from right stuff. <laughs> but uh, this was a very, also a very rare instance of Anaplex putting something up at what I would almost deem a reasonable price inconceivable still more than i would have liked to pay but considering that the original release was in two parts and both of them retailed for more than the complete set retailed for <laughs> i figured a 98 dollar pre-order was okay so i went ahead and got the complete series release of your lie in april Ah, cool. Yeah. Which is a, it's a pretty nice little set. But, um, you know, you got your, and there's a little booklet in there, too. I do not like how they have boxes that are oversized because yeah. they tend to freeze, and that's not a good thing long term. But, you know, whatever. We've already talked in the past about Anaplex's shortcomings. I do kind of like how they ship them already wrapped in a nice little, yeah, uh, special envelope. Yeah, I don't 
tend to keep those very often, but it's nice. Um, but this is a series I've heard a lot about, and I've heard almost universally great things about it. It's one I really wanted to see. And again, it was originally selling for way too freaking much. Monkey's out of the bottle, man. So I think each half was retailing for about 150 or 160, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just uh, yeah. So the complete one for two thirds of that. Oh yeah, <laughs> much better you know, price wise. Yeah, I actually ended up getting this at a little bit more than two dollars an episode. The amount four dollars, a little more than four dollars an episode, which is not terrible. Not extraordinary, but not terrible. But I'm really looking forward to having this one eventually watched. I do finally have it, and that is exciting for me. <laughs> All right. Yes. So I'm going to start this and end this with uh, some things that are too big for me to pick up and show you. Oh, you could if you tried. Uh, yeah, I could if I tried. Um, so the first one is something I went ahead and did some room improvement with my uh, stimulus check. Not all of it, not even close to all of it, matter of fact, because they, they went on sale. Mm. But I went ahead and I got an extra Billy bookcase. Uh, and nice. I just got off here. So you should be able to see it. I'm going to keep this up for the length of my uh, discussion of it. Uh, I've sent Jake a copy of the picture because right now you can't see it. Otherwise. Yeah. Um, so what you're seeing is three of them back to back. And you see the little slats there. Um, unfortunately, I, I kind of had to remove two of the slats from uh, my other two to throw in there. And it's kind of stupid in a way because... I'm I, okay. They I couldn't find out why IKEA wouldn't ship. I so said we can't ship. It's too much to ship. So I eventually found out they had no trouble shipping the shelf, but they said it was too much to ship the two slats. They're like hmm. big. I could actually theoretically pick one up to to show, but I, I don't feel like it. Um, actually, you know what? Heck with it. I'm going to pick one up to show this. Just hold on. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Yeah. Oh. So two of those, that's way too heavy to ship. Oh, yeah. Um, so to get those, what I have to do is travel to Ikea, closest ones in Norfolk, hmm. to pick them up. It hmm. would cost, it'll cost me only 30 bucks, but the trip is going to be a long one. Hmm. So who knows when that's going to happen? The shelf only hmm. costs... 50 because they've really discounted it but it cost me almost as much of that shipping so you know but if you have like a big let, let's say you have like a pickup truck or something like that available mm -hmm. getting these shells is not that bad i mean if i had like a pickup truck available i would have just driven over there or to uh the one that's like about three hours north of us and mm -hmm. just gotten the shelf stuck it in the pickup truck and headed home with well, it. I guess it's three hours with traffic. Yeah. <laughs> because it's close. To, one of them's close to DC is the other. Yeah. Thing. It should I'm not take three that. hours without traffic, but with traffic. Yeah. It, it can be, <laughs> it's not so, yeah. it's not so bad when you're first to it, but that last edge that's close to DC, the traffic is crazy. Yeah. And then yeah. of course, uh, you know, Norfolk's about two hours, maybe. Ish. Here, ish, depending on traffic again. Yeah. But 
you know, I'll eventually be doing it. I mean, I'll take a trip. I'll go get, get some meatballs. And, you know, I also nice. moved, uh, I had like a tan shelf there. And I moved that next to the stairwell because when I originally did it, I put the white shelf next to the stairwell. But, mm -hmm. but they stick out enough that it doesn't work so well. The tan shelves are not as deep. So I just put those. So I've got the two tan shelves together, the two brown shelves together, and then I've got my three Billy bookcases together. So mm -hmm. one more Billy bookcase go, would go where that black shelf is that my manga is. The manga would return to the hallway, which was where they were at the flood. And that would complete what I want to do. I would run out of what shelving expansion room I have, but I have some good expansion room. Once things are done, I'll have uh, two and a half row, actually a little bit over two, like a two and two thirds rows that I could expand mm. with, which is a lot. That's mm. like, that's like 300, 400 di discs. So that's not too, <laughs> so it's, you know, I still have some good, expansion all right well that's all i got there <laughs> all right so now to move on with again i have a theme a place to kino lorber order um i want to say this was essentially a black friday order but i can't remember with certainty it was during that rough time of the year roughly um so holiday order they were running a pretty decent sale overall. So I got an assortment. And it's I'm going to start with the one item on the list that's actually an upgrade. I did already have this on DVD. I believe it was a Bare Bones DVD. I now have a Blu-ray with a couple of bonus features. Not much, but a couple. And this is of the Park Chan Wok Vampire Thriller Thirst, not to be confused with The Thirst, which is a grossly inferior film. <laughs> <laughs> but this is actually quite good. It's a very different, uh, it's very much in the vein of uh, Chan Wok films like Old Boy and Mr. Vengeance and that kind of thing. Um, he is a very talented director. If you like Korean cinema and vampire flicks, especially ones that are kind of brutal and bloody, you'd probably really enjoy this. And I was very happy to upgrade it for a low price. Yep, I still got my DVD release. <laughs> and one, day, one day we'll get that vampire month for movies galore. I was kind of hoping for this month, but... <laughs> Yeah. Now, my stuff, of course, we both do it differently. You look for themes. Sometimes I'll hit a theme, but for the most part, mm -hmm. I just try to hit them all in alphabetical, which puts some behind. And so, so it's kind of a weird combination of things. Like, I actually have something. I actually have one item from that Kino Lobar, Lobar sale in mine as well, but it's mm -hmm. a little bit further down the list. Um, Matter of fact, I've got something that's really recent that came in just a few days ago. Mm. I had a package from Right Stuff that had hit DC a month ago mm -hmm. and did not leave DC until a few days ago and mm. got here extremely quickly afterwards. I was so surprised. I had no, it, it, it still said it was in DC with the tracker, it just showed yeah. up on my porch. I had thought that these had been lost entirely because it was a month. But luckily enough, it came in. So you're going to get to see part of that. Matter of fact, four items of that particular one. So the first one is going to start. I actually went ahead. When I got Monster Musume, I thought, okay, you know what? There's only like three major Monster Girl series. So why don't I just go ahead and, and get in on the whole hype for that? You know, for kids. So I picked up A Centaur's Life, The Essentials. Oh. Uh, it was on sale, on the Right Stuff sale. So I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and get that. So it's another in the kind of Monster Girl series that they're not really related, so to speak. But they are, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> As far as the genre, so it kind of came 
in there. I uh, I'm curious about it. A lot of people who are into the whole Monster Girl phenomenon, they love it. Uh, I am uh, one of the. Uh, gosh, I can't think of his name. Uh, there's one particular uh, guy I follow on YouTube who is obsessed with these titles. Mm. I'm not really all that obsessed with it, but it looks like it could be fun. I mean, it wasn't mm -hmm. that bad. It was like 15 bucks. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good to get. Good times. Well, one that I got that was definitely less than 15 bucks. I don't remember exactly. I want to say it was around maybe seven or eight or nine was actually a movie that we presented not too long ago on our channel. As a, It's actually a fairly new release uh, of an older film, <laughs> an Oscar-winning film from the 80s that I've been, I mentioned at the time I've been meaning for some time to see, and I finally got to. Bruce Beresford film called Tender Mercies, which stars Robert Duvall, Robert Duvall, Betty Buckley, Wilford Brimley, Ellen Barkin, Tess Harper. Got actually some pretty decent special features on that one. But uh, as I mentioned before, in addition to being an Oscar-winning film, this is just a movie that's been on my radar for many years. And I will be happy to finally have an excuse to watch it. Who knows when I'll get to it, but it is there. <laughs> All right. So uh, for me, um, this next one is a space saver. And I had another reason to get this. Uh, it actually was funny because this one went out of stock when it first released. I was surprised at the amount of people who wanted it and bought it. And that is the Bobo Bo Complete Series. Ooh. All 76 episodes in a small package. Nice. Um, S'more Entertainment had tried to do a uh, had tried to do this one and Galaxy Express um, when they uh, tried to get into the anime business and failed. Then we got a third of the way through Galaxy Express, but their releases were this one here and this one, which was the second attempt, by the way, to release the series because they did try to release. I can't remember who was releasing it, uh, like in singles. But it was really poor quality release. Um, mm -hmm. This one was still kind of lower quality release wise. It mainly just had the English dub and the descriptive audio of the English dub. So theoretically, mm -hmm. you could watch a sub of the series. But in reality, you were just watching the. Uh, the hearing impaired version. So this versus this. Hmm. You, can yeah. see a, you can see where the space is. Yeah. So also this has the accurate sub. Mm -hmm. So if you want to watch this in sub, you can get a full accurate description. So if you're a big sub watcher, like I know Jake is, this mm -hmm. would be the ideal way to watch the series. Mm. because uh, that one's not as good. I'll probably be selling these in the future because they are OOP. So. <laughs> I was a little surprised you're not holding on to them for their uh, weird value. Uh, I'm getting to the point where I just really want to make some money back on things, so I'm yeah. probably going to be selling a lot of my older editions of things right. um, in the future. I'm just kind of waiting until enough of the unrest passes so that I feel like I can trust the mail system a little bit better. And mm. you know the whole thing. I, I want the stuff that I sell to get to the people in a timely oh, yeah. fashion. So I feel like that's going to improve in the next few months. And so I'm kind of holding off on stuff, but then I'm going to be doing a, a lot of selling in the near future. Probably eBay selling, but this is kind of cool. I'm kind of glad to get a hold of it. All right. Well, very good. I've got um, one that actually kind of thematically is going to be one that probably will seem quite at ease with uh, events, political and otherwise, of the last few months. 
And that is a Kevin Costner film from back in 08 called Swing Vote, <laughs> which features, amongst others, Costner, Paula Patton, Kelsey Grammer, Dennis Hopper, Nathan Lane, Stanley Tucci, George Lopez, Madeline Carroll, Gamer Winningham, Judge Reinhold, Willie Nelson. I mean, that's a hell of a cast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about it just for that. Um, I don't know much about the film, but it was like, I think it was four bucks. It was no more than five. So I was like, yeah, I'll throw that in the cart. <laughs> hmm. Hmm, some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so uh, let's talk about... Boruto. I am ah. slowly catching up, though I'm already two behind again. <laughs> what is the Boruto to our themes tonight? So, yeah, so this one is the sixth volume. It was the only one that went on sale, and I've been kind of just getting them as they go on sale. I'm not really in any hurry. I, I, I haven't even launched into it yet. I saw the movie. That's it. That's all the Boruto I've seen. What? What I don't like is that in the previous volumes, mm -hmm. we've had like numbers mm -hmm. on here uh, on the side to indicate. As you can see, no number anymore. Yeah. I was telling you this, uh, talking about this earlier, right? How it just mm -hmm. kind of they want to identify themselves like by the title now instead of right. the episode. So you've got you think to yourself maybe there's uh no indicator but there is you can see it like right here mm -hmm. you see like mm -hmm. set six and it has the number of the episodes on it mm -hmm. but i think that's just a mistake i think they really need to keep the numbers on the side right <laughs> so if y'all thought I was already Robert Duvall out, you were wrong. I have another Robert Duvall movie, although he is the co-star in this instance. This is another film that I've has been on my radar for many years, although in this case, I actually read the book because everyone in high school wanted to read Nathaniel Hawthorne. Let me tell you, everyone loved doing that. I can't remember if I saw this movie, honestly. But it was a movie that was pretty high profile in the mid-90s. It was starred Duvall, but it mainly starred Demi Moore and Gary Oldman. And that was uh, Roland Joffe's take on Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter, which, you know, again, uh, it was pretty cheap. And I was like, it's about time I put that in the collection. Yeah, Robert Prosky in there, Joan Plowright. Um, again, I, for the life of me, do not remember if this one ended up getting... Did this get any Oscar love? I can't remember. I don't I know. Like it, but I know, again, I know it was pretty high profile at the time. It is one I felt like I needed to get eventually, and uh, I look forward to giving it a go eventually. I have a thumbnail for tonight's vlogcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, let's see here. All right. So I'm going to be quicker on this one. Dark Cat. Uh, somebody on the anime collectors uh, galore. Uh, it's called Dark Cat. Nice. They told me that this was basically really terrible. And <laughs> it was terrible in a good way. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I just, I have to check it out now. It was only like $2 on the sale. So, hey. <laughs> right. I, can, I can swing that for terrible stuff that might bring me a laugh. <laughs> Now, the next one up actually was not $2. It actually was one of the pricier ones I bought, um, which is strange because this is another one that we recently presented as a new release from Kino. 
And it's one that when we presented it, I, t I said something about my history with this movie. Um, and my, my father, who actually, his birthday would have been yesterday, um, introduced me to this movie years ago, and I didn't know what to make of it. I really didn't. I didn't care for it, but I didn't know what to make of it. And I think I said when we presented it that if we ever do our second chances month again, in fact, I hope we do. I'm very much hoping we do. That's a good topic. I, this will probably be my next one that I put forward for that. And that is a Chris Christopherson film from 1976 called The Sailor Who Fell from Grace with the Sea. Hmm. It also stars Sarah Miles. You've got, um, it's based on a novel by Yukio Mishima. Okay, that makes sense. Based on a Japanese novel, that makes so much more sense. Written and directed by Louis John Carlino. This is a weird-ass movie. I Again, I was much younger when I saw it. And if I see it again, I might have more appreciation for it. But this was one of those movies that, you know, we all have those movies that you kind of like, you're left with that. What the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> but I had to jump on this chance to get a nice new copy for the collection just in case we do that topic again. <laughs> and even if not, I would like to revisit it one day and see if my reaction's the same. So. Yeah, I love uh, I love being able to revisit certain things. It's just like uh, I know at least one that that did not make our choices that would be hmm. that revisitation. All right, so from right stuff to Dollar Tree, we yeah. have a Christina Ricci and John Cusack film called Distorted. Ooh, yeah, let's see tagline: Don't fear the lies, fear the truth. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, let's see here. Um, it's basically she's moved from uh, the city to a luxury condo that boasts ultra modern design, say the art features, and security systems. When Lauren starts to suspect that the building has a dark side, she seeks help from Vernon an investigative journalist who has an interest in cyber conspiracy together. They come to believe that the pinnacle may be brainwashing and un the unsuspecting residents. So it's kind mm. of a cool little thing. It looks interesting for a dollar. I buy yeah. it for a dollar. Um, yeah, indeed. And I bought this for $5. I think four or five dollars. There were a few. I think Swing Vote, I think Scarlet Letter. I think there were a total of four on this order that were like five bucks, and that's so I oh, threw yeah. them on there. They were but this cheap. one, yeah, this one actually Kino has marked as it's going out of print. So that was all the more reason to get it. And that, of course, and the fact that it co stars Peter Falk and Julianne Moore and Ellen Burstyn. I mean, geez. This is a film called Roommates. Hmm. You ever see this? <clears throat> no. So it's one of Falk's last roles, I think. It was from 1995. Very so it's definitely, huh? Very reflective. There you go. So he was a little. He was a little older there, but you got Peter Falk and DB Sweeney, and like I said, you got Julianne Moore. You have got uh, Ellen Burstyn and. I thought I saw someone else on music by Elmer Bernstein, directed by Peter Yates. So this looks fun. I don't know much about it, but I figure anything with Peter Falk is worth a look, and I, I, I look forward to it. <laughs> He's a fun actor. I liked him in Murder by yeah. Death. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when I got... Oh, uh, actually, well, sorry, just quick... Uh, I, I, my slow reaction time. We watched a Columbo episode last night. One of the we're we're down to the wire. I think there's six episodes left, and then I will have all of Columbo done. Mm. But we did one last night where he was after a nationally syndicated radio host played by William Shatner, and that was actually <laughs> a pretty fun episode. <laughs> I remember the Shatner episode. Uh, there were a lot of cool uh, guest stars on that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I went and I got a uh, one of these on Black Friday. You, you mark some of these off to say, mm -hmm. okay, I'll pounce on that. I think that's really what a lot of the um, yes pleases and the priority ones are about. And one such priority was Dr. Sleep. Ooh. I finally got it down to like $7.50 mm -hmm. on 4K, and I was like, yes. The Blu-ray was mm -hmm. more expensive, so I was like, I'll get the 4K then. Why not? This is a fun one. It kind of walks the line between King's book and uh, and the uh, Kubrick adaptation. Uh, I yeah, an easy remember. line to walk. I have I have finished Doctor Sleep, but I cannot remember it. So mm. uh, I mean, the movie was kind of fun. It's got this kind of weird soul vampire group, and uh, who kind of sucks psychic energy out of people, and. Mm they end up eventually going back to the hotel and Danny is the main character in this. So it's kind of cool following the adventures, looking at what's going on. It was a fun film. I really enjoyed it mm -hmm. much better. My uh, much more of a King movie than the, uh, than the uh, other shining was right. <laughs> This one uh, felt more like uh, a King-related film than a right. art piece. So uh, if you're a huge Kubrick fan, this might be a little bit harder for you to swallow, so don't expect it. If you're a huge King, but if you, but if you liked it okay and you were like, ooh, you'll get some nods. It won't have the same feel. But it will uh, give you some nods to that. And if you're a King fan, you'll probably really like this. Good deal. Mm -hmm. The um, Speaking of King-related stuff, another thing I watched last night was uh, our one of our movies for this week, for Movies Galore, we'll be checking out The Running Man. I had totally not realized that was based on a, a Richard Bachman uh, story. Mm -hmm. I, so... My ignorance of sci-fi showing, apparently. <laughs> but, anywho, uh, another movie that I got, I actually got a couple of legit classics in this stack. And this is one of them. This is a film from 1960, a Stanley Kramer film, featuring Spencer Tracy, Friedrich March, and Gene Kelly, called Inherit the Wind which is about the Scopes Monkey Trial, uh, as it is often known, um, back in the early, what was it, 20th century or whenever it was, where a Tennessee teacher was brought to trial for daring to teach Darwinism in school. Yep. You know, which... I don't know. Is that what the uh, is that the um, thing that we're trying to get back to with this whole uh, uh, <laughs> America Great thing? Is that what it is? I I don't know. I wonder. I wonder. But anyway, this one also has Dick York, uh, Dan Harry Morgan, Noah Beery Jr., Gordon Paul, Phil Paul Hart, not Phil Hartman, Paul. Man, hey, he was less older than I thought. <laughs> but uh, and again, like I said, um, it's uh, it's it is really good. I have seen this movie once upon a time, and I was very much impressed by it. I thought it was very interesting, and uh, I have been meaning to put this in the collection for some time. Kind of wish Criterion would do an edition, but this will be an excellent placeholder in the meantime. <laughs> well, my singular uh, one that I got from the Kino sale that's in this pile mm -hmm. is a little collection of animated uh, films, uh, French animated films, which mm -hmm. uh, the main one being The Dog Father. Ooh. I just it looked entertaining. It was only a few bucks. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll just add that to the list. And uh, yeah, yeah. That, well, that was it. That was the whole of it. <laughs> it just looked entertaining. It has a bunch of other ones on there uh, as well. And it has multiple documentaries about the animator. So it's going to be fun. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. Dogfather, Goose That Lay the Golden Egg, Heist and Seek, The Big House Ain't a Home. 
mother, dog, father, bow, bows and bows and errors, um, deviled yeggs, watch that birdie, uh, saltwater toughy, money spells love, rockabye maybe, haunting dog, eagle beagles, from <laughs> bats to riches, Goldilocks and the Three Hoods, Rockhounds, and Medicure. Medicure. Nice. Okay. Now this next one also fits squarely in that category of I saw it and I thought that looks entertaining. And actually, I'm willing to wager this is probably already a favorite of yours. And you'll let me know if you recognize it before I present it, because I'm sure you will. It's a film written by Gene Wilder and Terrence Marsh and directed by Gene Wilder, starring Wilder, Gilda Radner, Dom DeLuise, and Jonathan Price. And it's a film called Haunted Honeymoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ever see that? Oh, yeah. It's a fun one. Is it? Yeah, I've never seen it, but I saw that and I was like, oh, that looks fun. And the idea of something written and directed by Wilder, in addition to starring him, I was like, yeah, I got to do that. <laughs> the last one that I saw from him was Sherlock Holmes' Smarter Brother, which also I believe this, was directed by him. Well, this was 10 oh, years yeah. later. Yeah, I was going to say the other one I can remember from him. Doing yeah, and, yeah uh, that was a fun one. I know you showed me that. So let's see. Um, this one's an oldie. Uh, this is one that I that I got a while back, like over a year ago. Oh. I picked it up for was when it was going for like three dollars. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I can get it for three dollars because I'm trying to pick up superhero films. So I went ahead and I got Fan Four Stick on Steelbook <laughs> for three dollars. Really? Yeah. I <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's really bad, but uh, I can't be any worse than the Silver Surfer movie they did. In fairness, it has its moments. It's just they so thoroughly ruined Doom that uh. they did that in the first in the other movie too. So yeah. it's I don't know. I, I looked at it. I was like three bucks. Uh, it'll be there. I mean, eventually, I want to get Catwoman in my collection as well. So. Oh, I I'll, I'll admit I'd pay three bucks to get that on Steelbook. So, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of you know it's it's kind of yeah. interesting that I have a thing on Steelbook that's probably not <laughs> worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, am I go? Yep. Okay, now this one was very definitely a cart topper, uh, four or five dollars. I think it was five. And I don't know that I would have sprung for it otherwise, but it's a movie that I've known about for many years. It's got a title that sticks in your brain and doesn't want to leave. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, okay, so I'm going to, you know, and I saw it and I saw it was five bucks and I was like, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> so it's a movie starring Penelope Ann Miller called The Gun and Betty Lou's Handbag. And that one also has um, William Forsythe, Matthew Moriarty, and Alfre Woodard um, from 1992. I do not know this movie, but I know, like I said, I've known of it for many years. It looks fun. It looks like it was probably worth five bucks. Yeah. So uh, I got this in uh, Christmas season of 2019. And that is the uh, Fantastic Beasts uh, Crimes of Grindelwald, which is, of course, even more uh, controversial than it was back then. Because yeah. they removed Johnny Depp from the character now because of the whole yeah. um, wife-beating claims. And, right. you know, I mean, that's understandable. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say that he's not guilty of that. Um, right. I mean, how much... I mean, Amber Heard is not much better, but... Uh, you know, people doing bad things. But then again, you know, I haven't seen any of these. I am curious to see his take on Grindelwald. I need to watch oh, these. Two. They're, they're I mean, both excellent. Actually, I'm surprised that they, because uh, uh, J.K. Rowling's been kind of canceled as well. So I'm surprised that they are making the third one. Um, so it's kind of a... Uh, I'm not surprised. Money. Yeah, that's true. But... Uh, 
it's kind of good to have it. I guess it's been a while. It's been over a year now, so I guess it's good to show that. Angela Rowling was canceled. I don't believe I'd heard that. Oh, yeah. She's been canceled since her, like, uh, what was it? The anti-trans uh, comments. Uh, yeah. They 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 canceled her about a year ago. Like people are forgetting it now. That's that's why yeah. I think what happened with Depp actually is that they're gonna forget because oh, yeah. because a lot of this is kind of equally divisive against the two of them. But Depp just yeah. needs to, he needs Depp needs to pull a Robert Downey Jr. get himself cleaned up. Mm -hmm. He's a great actor. He just needs to get himself cleaned up. Have somebody give him a chance on it, and uh, I think he'll recover fine i think honestly a lot of it is he he his biggest thing right now is, is he's got a pr image uh a pr nightmare going on and he doesn't seem to give a rat's ass about that no. and and i think he needs to if he wants to <laughs> anyway Next up, we have a star-studded film. This is a star-studded movie that I am looking forward to the upcoming remake of this. Uh, they are starting with um, the basic cast and crew, and not counting Mr. Depp, of course, but uh, uh, Kenneth Branagh is reprising his role as Hercule Poirot for the upcoming Death on the Nile. But in the meantime, I went ahead and got an older Death wow. on the Nile, which has, listen to this cast, Peter Ustinov, Jane Birkin, Bette Davis, John Finch, George Kennedy, Simon Matt Corkendale, Maggie Smith, Lois Childs, Mia Farrow, Olivia Hussey, Angela Lansbury, David Niven, and Jack Warden. I mean, that is a hell of a cast there. And it's, you know, an Agatha Christie mystery. Um, that right there is, this is very much worth a pickup. I'm really looking forward to eventually getting, sitting down and watching this one. <laughs> yeah, that's one that's definitely on my list. I, need, I mean, I've got Murder on the Orient Express, the, right. uh, the original of that, because it's an Oscar winner. But, I, right. I mean, I, I do want to get that one as well, because it's in that series. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> eventually. <laughs> it so, did read uh, for whatever reason but you know yeah. I think Ustinov plays him in this one it was originally Albert Finney wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. He did a great job uh, in the role yeah so this one goes back again these all these last ones are kind of old pickups but they but I, as I say I go alphabetically so every time I get one that comes before it it jumps right in line ahead of them so mm -hmm. this one goes back again one or two years ago. I cannot remember when. Uh, in June. It was June-ish. Because mm -hmm. that's why I put a ton of steel books mm -hmm. on sale for Pixar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is Finding Nemo. Oh, I'm I really glad because my old Finding Nemo was a DVD release. And uh, by the way, I've since upgrade all of my Pixar to at least Blu-ray. Um, but my old DVD release was scratched all to hell and could barely uh, it. And it's a great film. I'm glad to have it updated. And 4K, it's going to look gorgeous uh, when I get to it <laughs> again. Uh, yeah. I have a working copy of it. And it does, I do like the cut. I do like the cover. It does look cool. Mm. Okay, so another little mini theme for actors. I just presented this Jack Warden film. I have another Jack Warden film, one that teams Warden with Donald Sutherland and Sean Penn. How's that for a cast? In a Louis Malle film that's a remake of the Italian film Big Deal on Madonna Street, but this one goes by the name Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that title, but I'm like, okay, I saw that cast and it was cheap. And I was like, I'm getting that. <laughs> I have no idea what I'll make of this, but it just looked like it was worth a pickup. It looks fun. 
And again, with that cast, Sutherland, Warden, and Penn, I mean, it can't be that bad. <laughs> well, yeah. and we were talking about cancel culture a little bit, and one such uh, individual, maybe rightly so, really, is Ellen, um, who uh, starred in Finding Dory. <laughs> yeah. And she had, uh, but she had a bit of a better reputation back then. Yeah, and this was a cute film. It was not as good as the original. I liked Finding Nemo a lot better, but this was a fun film. And it's cool to have the matching ones. And if you all look at the thumbnail, my thumbnail is going to have me holding these. Uh -huh. So you know, they're just kind of fun to have. I, I enjoy having them. They match well. I mean, I can't. I'm not sure about the backing, but it's kind of cool to have them. And it, and she does she does do a great job as Dory. I mean, she definitely oh, does. Yeah. yeah. So next up, we have the film, another film that we recently presented on on this channel that Kino recently put out, and I think we had determined that the fact that the title amused the hell out of me. Uh, caught my attention, and the fact that it's a Western killed your attention. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a Lamont Johnson film called Catalani and Little Britches. <laughs> you got Burt Lancaster, John Savage, Rod Steiger, Diane Lane, and a man, it says, and introducing Amanda Plummer. And there's also a Scott Glenn's in it, too. So that's a heck of a cast, too. But again, I just love the title. And if we ever do a Western month, I will be putting this up as a possibility. <laughs> but I, I'm glad I got that. <laughs> See, we're doing all these ones here. Like, I'm not going to jump the gun, uh, get into our... Um, Watch our discussion this week, and I'm sure Brandon will tell you all about what we're going to be doing this coming month. <laughs> of all oh, of the topics, it was one of the ones I had the least interest in and could not pull from my own collection for anything, whereas a lot of these would, would have fit topics I want to do. <laughs> uh, well, it's always next month. There's always next month. Yeah. So, um, actually, I had to obtain uh, three films out of that. I'm just kind of yeah. glad that Dave's other movie suggestion did not <laughs> meet it because I don't know where I would get a hold of that. We'd have to pull off of one of Dave's, like, rips or something. Uh, yeah. uh, so, in any case, uh, speaking of it, actually, that's perfect for mine because this is one that I met through Dave, and you have actually watched one of this guy's short films. Mm -hmm. This is a film called Fireside Tales, hmm. or a film uh, by a small director. Uh, the director's name is Ian Messing Messinger. Mm -hmm. uh, he also did Monkey Farm, but the one that you would remember him from would be the Friday the Thirteenth Legacy, which is one, of, which is that short one that we did at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so again, we discussed that. Well, that was the, the, one, uh, the one where they met uh, Tommy at the lake. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to hear more on that, we did do a discussion on one of our vlog casts when we covered the Friday the 13th stuff. It was the first one we did for Halloween, the second Halloween for that month. And mm -hmm. uh, that where we talked about Friday the 13th fan films. So it was there. This was something I picked up long before that. Mm -hmm. And I had Monkey Farm. Yet. I have yet to see any of these. Uh, I am way behind on watching anything. Uh, so, uh, and I decided to try and dive back into the Arrowverse again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be doing that probably for next year. <laughs> Good terms, yep. I'm almost through Arrow season two. <laughs> okay. All right. So, for my last one tonight, and, uh, Appreciate everyone sticking with us for this, although this is not as long a video as it, is, as it could have been, so that's good. Oh, well done. Uh, we're going to end, for my my part of it, we're going to end on another pretty much indisputable classic. This is an old film. 
Actually, this is probably the oldest standalone film in my collection. Uh, it's German silent film from 1920, hmm. which if we had done one of my topics that I suggested was silent cinema, we will do a silent film month eventually. <laughs> it will happen eventually. And this will be one of my suggestions, I'm sure. It's a film by Robert Devine called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Hmm. And this is one that I definitely am a long time coming to get this into the collection. I have seen this. It's been a long time, but I have seen it. And like I said, it's one that's been on the to-get list for a good long while. But I think this might be one of the ones that's going out of print. There was some reason why I felt the need to jump on it. It may be one of the ones that's going out of, I can't remember. But whatever the case, I finally got it. Very happy. Hoping I'll have an excuse to watch it sooner than later. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I'm ending on a big note. Mm -hmm. So, um, late Christmas gift, but my wife had given me a, a choice. She said, I want to get you something big. So I could, um, get you a, get you one of the shelves. I could get you a Keurig, uh, that, that makes multiple cups of coffee instead of a single serving. Or... We could upgrade the TV and the bedroom. Well, I said, well, let's upgrade the TV and the bedroom. And it was a... Because one of the bedroom was actually really small. I should have taken a picture of it before. <laughs> but it was kind of kind of little. I think it was like a 20, 25 inch, something like that. Hmm. Back in the day, that would have been a big. But for, uh, for a... Uh, widescreen TV that's actually kind of smallish, especially if you're my age, if you're in your 40s and you're trying to see that and look at the teeny print because it's one of the advents of HD TV is the print went. <laughs> no, sir, I don't like it. And you yeah. from across the room in a bed. I'm just like, I had to have my wife read to me on certain things. And we're on the TV. So uh, we went ahead and we upgraded to a 50-inch TV. It's a smart mm. TV from Samsung. It's uh, quite cool looking. It's 4K. So this is the second 4K TV. We do not have a second 4K player. But should mm. I ever get the Xbox Series X, which is, a, which is on my wish list, I'm going to move the Xbox One X upstairs, and I'll have a 4K player in two rooms. And that will be really mm -hmm. cool. But as it is, we can watch. Uh, we got the Netflix. Uh, my wife pays for the Netflix 4K uh, service, so we can actually watch 4K TV in there, which is kind of cool. We've been enjoying the big screen. Um, we kicked off with some. Um, gosh, what was it? Uh, some Animal Crossing. I ended up getting her an Animal Crossing Switch uh, for her for her Christmas gift. And so she looked at Animal Crossing. And of course, we played President Evil and some Horizon Zero Dawn, which is breathtaking on that screen, by the way. And uh, it's just uh, there. I'm telling you, it's just awesome. Very nice. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Of course, if you did, hit that like button, subscribe, share, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.